Hello and welcome to 1979 Revolution Black Friday. So another interesting one, positive ratings. Uh, it's a more narr a choice driven game, so I don't know how it's gonna quite go. Well, let's play. Chapter one. During the summer of 1978, thousands of Iranians flooded the streets and fought for change despite their class, religious beliefs, and political allegiance. The protests erupted into a bloody uprising against Iran's self-appointed king, the Shah. What you are about to experience is based on real stories, real events, and real people. The choices you make will shape your experience in the revolution and the fates of those around you. Chapter 1, Dark Days Safe House, Tehran, Iran, January 1980 <clears throat> if you're listening to this, then it means you received my package. Unfortunately, this will be my last drop, as I've been forced into hiding. With the U.S. hostage situation, it's become unsafe to get anything out of Iran. You must get these to the press immediately. Many people's lives depend on it, including my own. If anything should happen to me, you must trust Bibi. I'm worried that our darkest days are still ahead of us. Okay. I'm guessing these are original photos because this is based, oh, well, like I said, it's based on eyewitness accounts. Okay, is there anything else? Uh, am I supposed to do something else? No. I mean, uh, I'm looking, but... Is there something I'm supposed to see? Specifically, I mean beyond the pictures themselves. Oh! Do you remember what I said when I first joined the revolution? Peace is the best weapon, violence, not worth the sacrifice, freedom or death. The only way to defeat this violent regime is through peaceful protest. <laughs> They found us. Baby, what's going on? Quick, grab the plans. We need to go now. Okay. Okay, where is it? <laughs> Find the plans before time runs out. Oh, that's time. Approach and click on hotspots icons to interact. Open the door. Open the door. Find it. Find it. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. Okay, I got it! Good lord! I know what to do, Reza John. Okay, okay. Free! Uh, uh, you want hey. some of this? Come on! Uh, 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 Dark days. Okay. I almost didn't get the plans. He ran because of the great leadership of the Shah is an island of stability in one of the more troubled areas of the world. Rather not even remember. That day I went to Pearly and I went to the Chinese Square. Uh, 
Oh yeah, I chose just pieces because yeah, violence justifies the means, and not really. That just does more. Because if you justify it, your enemies will justify it the same way. Violence in Iran has escalated sharply in recent months. The main targets have been cinemas, nightclubs, fashionable restaurants. Nineteen seventy nine revolution, Black Friday. I don't know about anything about the Vince personally, so I can't say too much at this point about it. Uh, I'm not a huge history buff. Chapter two, one of us. Even in prison, Iran, April third, nineteen eighty. You're a very lucky man, Master Shirazi. In my former life. I wouldn't have let you live. Drink. You must be thirsty. Rather, your chai is getting cold. No, thank you. <laughs> have it your way. This could be a very unpleasant place. Because here at Evan, we are correcting paths. Correcting paths? Is that what you call this? Ah! You will learn not to disrespect me. <clears throat> you were one of us. We fought side by side to overthrow the Shah, that Western puppet. What changed? I was You're never just one as bald. <laughs> when did you lose your faith? Instead of helping the new regime, you masterminded horrendous acts of violence against us. Are you ready for your redemption? I can save you, Rizzo. Yeah, don't need it. I don't need, need your redemption. At this point, redemption is the only thing that can save you. Open it. Go on, open it. Or are you afraid to confront your past? Your photos rallied our nation to rebel against the shop. But now, they are being used to identify those who plot against our new Islamic government. Good offering. Show me an act of good faith, and I will be fair. Reza Shirazi, you are charged with treason and conspiring to carry out a series of attacks against the Islamic Republic of Iran. How do you plead? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Does it really matter how I plead? Do you know what we do to traitors here in Evan Prison? Redeem them. Yes, that's what I do. God willing, inshallah. I'm sure it's I torture, but... I know so much about you, Reza John. I know that you are coming from a very well-connected family who are loyal to the Shah. And I know about your Savak brother Hussein. Leave my brother out of this. I know that upon your return from Germany, you joined our fight against the Shah, despite your family's wishes. But what do you know about me? Do you know who I am? An interrogator. You are the interrogator. I see. My name is Asadullah Lajavardi. But you already knew that, didn't you? Now, what is my name?
asshole. <coughs> hey, his asshole. his name does begin with S. Why can't you show me the decency of remembering my name? My name is Asadullah Lajivardi. But here in Evan, they call me Hajar. Now, what is my name? Let's just get this over with. What is my name? <coughs> Uh, that's all you got? Speak off! Uh, uh, this is your last chance, Reza. Uh, uh, Reza. Uh, why can't you show me the decency? Oh, of come on! My name. My name is Asadullah Lajivardi. Here in Evan, they call me Hajar. Now, what is my name? Haj Aga. Haj Aga. See, that wasn't so difficult. Well, it's not so difficult when I have to. Sit! Reza, the three men arrested with you have been executed. They confessed. They told us everything. We found your plans to bomb the Revolutionary Guards headquarters. I don't know of any plans. Look, I'm just a photographer. Do you know what this is? Of course you don't. A city boy like you has never had a use for a cattle prod until now. It takes about 400 milliamps to stop a human heart. We don't want that. Not yet. 25 milliamps? That burns you from the inside. It could damage an organ if I'm not careful. The next time I offer you a cup of tea, maybe you will think twice before. <laughs> Give us all the information about your collaborators and the details of your next target. If you have the plans, you wouldn't need to friend, ask. Bobak Ozan. Who is he? Where can we find him? Is he the one who recruited you? Was he the mastermind behind the attacks in March? Reza, don't make me use this again. You could go to hell. Stop ah! talking! <laughs> One of us. I mean, if you have to ask, doesn't that mean you don't have the information you wanted? I mean, it's a common tactic to say, oh, all your cohorts. Chapter 3. 
disco, of course. Here you are, Babakjan. Merci. To Fardo. I mean, isn't it a common tactic yeah, to say, oh, all of them have money. already confessed? I know I'm good looking, but save your film for something important. Every image has a story, Bobak John. Today, right now, every picture counts. September 7th, 1978. This picture back in Germany. Oh, yeah? That's nice of you, Reza John. Oh, not for me, it's for Hannah. Hannah? Hannah Kier. Oh, you're gonna like her. She's got a thing for Iran. Oh, though. yeah, Vaughan! Yeah, man. I've told her about you and your legendary disco moves. <laughs> John Travolta Bobo has nothing on me. <laughs> nice. Here. In here. What's this? Listen to it, Reza. Gushkombehesh. It's Khomeini's latest speech, and it just came from France. A new Iran is coming, Reza John, and I'm here to help spread the word. That cassette came from France. Yeah, that's, uh, that's where Khomeini's been recording all his speeches. Babak, what are you so worried about? They have eyes everywhere. And these cassettes have become the voice of the revolution and therefore a threat to the regime. Now take it, Baba. Yeah. You know you want to. Uh, I, I don't know, Babak. Baba, have I ever steered you wrong? Are you forgetting about Lily? <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's you like the Ramones, she like the Ramones, it was a match made in heaven. Baba, she looked like a Ramon. Okay, okay, you're right. Right. <laughs> but seriously, you need to check this out. Come on, Reza. Let's change Iran. I'm here to take pictures, not choose sides. Everyone takes a side. Okay? Everyone. It's just words, Bobak. Maybe to you, it's just words. But to me, it's words that have never been spoken out loud before. The time is now, Reza John. To know me, family, you know this. That's why you're here. My final offer, Reza. You ready to get educated? Bush, okay. I'll give it a listen. Honey, that's all I ask. Okay? But keep it hidden, and whatever you do, do not listen to it at home. I don't even want to imagine what your mother would do. <laughs> you're still scared of my mother, huh? <laughs> and you're not? Good point. <laughs> okay, Baba, Bia, let's get a better view. Bibi wants you to capture how big this is becoming. Who's Bibi? You're gonna like her. This is all because of her. See why I told you to save your film? This is incredible. This is the future of Iran. This is our future. Start taking pictures. Hey, can you read what that says, Reza? Some people call them martyrs, but to me they were victims. I never thought I'd see the day the Shah statue would be trashed. There we go. Dying a martyr was an act of heroism and a common theme on the banners of the revolution. Huh, interesting. Oh, protesters, protesters held portraits of martyred men, sometimes women, praising their noble sacrifice. Long live the martyrs of the Islamic Revolution. Martyrdom is something of great meaning across many cultures and re religions. Muslims respect Imam Hossein, just as Christians hail St. Stephen, both of whom died for their cause. The value of religious self-sacrifice, combined with the physical defenselessness against the Shah's well-armed military, made martyrdom a common theme on the banners of the revolution. Huh, this is interesting, I like this. I mean, you know, it's kind of setting it up, like, you need to take this photo because of it, but, you know, that's fine. Oh, and we can kind of see the other stuff. This is a cornerstone of Iranian culture. Its consumption is a central focus for family and friends during gatherings, discussing politics, or taking a break. The traditional Iranian way to drink tea is to place a piece of kwan, sugar cube, in between the front teeth to use the cube as a sweetening filter as you sip the tea. Iranians adhere to a specific tea drinking etiquette. It is rude not to offer tea to a guest, and is in similarly impolite to decline tea when offered. Oh, well, that's why he was not happy. Uh, the regime had one overriding aim from the moment it arrested us. It was to force us to reject our beliefs and show that its lashes were stronger than our ideals. Former inmate. Still in use, Evan Prison was constructed in 1972 under the Shah, Mohammad Reza Pavlavi. The prison is located at the foot of the al Mountains in a neighborhood of the same name. Evin primarily holds political prisoners and enemies of the state. It is notorious for its unusually harsh conditions and secretive and brutal tor tor pra torture practices. Under Asadullah Lejavardi's ward wardenship, and I'm not going to be able to pronounce these names correctly, sorry. 
Evin became overcrowded due to mass arrests. Rooms originally built to house 15 inmates were housing, were housing 75, and an estimated 15,000 inmates were, ser were serving time in Evin. After the CIA orchestrated the 1953 coup d'etat that placed the Shah in power, the U.S. helped establish a secret police that came to be known under the ac acronym SAVAK. CIA operatives were sent to Iran to train the next generation in interrogation, surveillance, and torture techniques. In an effort to extinguish any critics of the Shah's regime, Savak subjected many brutalities upon the people who voiced opposition. In 1979, when the Shah was overthrown, the feared members of Savak fled Iran or faced ex execution. It is speculated that a small group of Savak officials endured the regime change in exchange for training new prison guards at, the, at Av Avin. Other members of the prison's new staff were themselves victims of Savak. Reports suggest that Avin's guards perpetrated the same violence witnessed under the previous regime. Yeah, that's usually what happens. Based on a real person, a scorned prisoner of the Shah's regime and member of the Islamic fundamentalist group, Azodal Lovjavardi acted as Avin's prison warden in the early 1980s. Over 7,900 political prisoners were tortured and ex executed in his four years of wardenship, 2,500 of which was personally responsible for. Lovjavardi took pride in his handling of inmates. He brought his family to live on Avin's premises and called the prison a converted university, or ideological school, where prisoners studied Islam and learned their errors. He was later removed from his position after complaints by other Islamic officials of his unusually harsh and excessive torture of inmates. I have repeatedly said that neither my desire, nor my age, nor my position allows me to govern. I don't want to have the power or the government in my hand. I am not interested in personal power. It is the Iranian people who have selected their own capable and trustworthy individuals and give them the responsibilities. However, personally, I can't accept any special role or responsibility. After the Shah's departure from Iran, I will not become a president nor accept any other leadership role. Just like before, I limit my activities only to guiding and directing the people. Interesting. I've never seen anything like this. There has to be at least 100,000 people on the streets. The universal home for changing and passionate people from all backgrounds to join the revolution. In early September 1978, half a million protesters marched through Tehran. Between 6 and 9 million protesters marched throughout Iran during a two-day demonstration in December 1978. The number of protesters accounted for 10% of the population, setting a historical precedent for the largest national involvement in a revolutionary protest. Wow. The King's Statue, the revolution successfully abolished Iran's 2,500-year-old monarchy, reshaping the corner of the nation's history. The Pav Pahlavi dynasty of Iran, Mohammad Reza Shah and his father Reza Shah, reigned for over 50 years. Their combined reign was just a blip on the timeline of Iran's 2,500-year-old history of continuous monarchy. The abolition of the... the abolition of the Iranian monarchy marked a tremendous turning point for the people and politics of Iran. I'm sorry if you find this boring, but I find it interesting. I like learning stuff like this. Looks like Khomeini, right? It's Shariat Madori, Grand Ayatollah. I was a religious leader with outspoken progressive beliefs. Ayatollah was a prominent Iranian cleric who expressed progressive religious views. He preached about the democratic will of the people and accused past elections for being fixed. He believed that no government could ever be forced upon the people, no matter its moral agenda. Uh, I don't know about that. To some, those people praying would be intimidating. But to me, it's pretty powerful. Public prayer. Mass public prayers were the sit-ins of the Iranian Revolution. Ayatollah urged his followers to avoid violence through his teachings. From the beginning, I have not asked people to speak their minds, but with calm and dignity, not in a provocative way. Among strikes and boycotts, public prayer was one of the many forms of non-cooperation with the regime. 
Hey, good luck trying to buy anything from the bazaar. All the shopkeepers have gone on strike too. When the Shah Tureddin martial law reported 30,000 oil workers went on strike, causing a crippling chain reaction. Growing unrest among the working class brought bustling cities to a standstill. When the Shah Tureddin martial law reported 30,000 oil workers went on strike. The strike caused a chain reaction as employees of schools, factories, banks, and other government institutions followed suit. This act of resistance played an instrumental role in the collapse of the Shah's regime. But Mike, seriously, I can't wait this to get these developed. Did you get a picture of Ayatollah Shariat Madori? People are saying that he should lead Iran. Who's Shariat Madori? He's a cleric who understands the hearts of the oppressed. No religious mullah is going to lead this country. Fahmidi, understand? That's over. Why not? Are we not a nation of Muslims, brother? Brother? Marudar? We are a nation of equality greater than Western capitalism or your paganism. Fahmidi, understand? No mullah will run this government. Be found me, Jimmy Gang? Hey, comrade. Lighten up. Chufti, you better back hey, away. Hey, 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 hey. Come okay? There. We don't do this, all right? This, all of this is about nonviolence. We don't want to give the army any reason to intervene. I don't trust this punk with his camera. Keep walking. That's right. He's communist. Always posturing, never what thinking about the boy? bigger picture. Come on. Man, Bobak, what happened to you back there? Look, just because I didn't kick his ass doesn't mean I didn't want to. <laughs> Did you see his hair? You guys share the same barber? Comrade, <laughs> that's all you got? Come on, let's hit the streets. Disco, of course. A lot of achievements for, I guess, just making certain choices. Chapter 4, Not the Iran You Left. Avenue. I'm not going to pronounce that. I don't want to mispronounce as much names as I can. This is not the Iran you left a year ago. The people are angry, especially after Salvak burned down the cinema Rex. How do you know it was Salvak, man? Come on, Bubba. Everybody knows it's them. This is what they do. But now, people want answers. You think it can get out of control? Look, it could get ugly, but we won't achieve anything through violence. How are the people going to take on an army? Look, Reza John, you have to believe in the power of people, okay? Good will triumph. Now come on, it's time to discover what this revolution's all about. Oh, okay. That's an interesting look. I've seen this guy before. He calls himself the Walking Dead. He's a walking memorial. Pesaram, my son. Please, take a picture. Show the world what is happening here. Okay, Use Reza, the camera button to enter Look photography. at this street as a sandwich. <laughs> Are you okay, Bobby? Yeah, I'm great. Oh, Leah. It's the perfect analogy with the Some protesters wore graphic photographs Bread, of murdered revolutionaries cheese, and became the walking the billboards. Sabsy, Whether the victims were killed on the street, tortured, or executed, their stories were immortalized in the revolutionary landscape. Some protesters wore graphic photographs of murdered revolutionaries and became walking billboards. Whether the victims were killed on the street, tortured, or executed, their stories were immortalized in the revolutionary landscape. We can go back here. Oh. Wasn't there something else? We did labor strikes, right? Yeah, okay. That's fine. Think about it, Reza. The laborers, the bozaris, they're the bread, the new. You can't make a lochman without bad buddy, and you definitely can't have a functioning society without workers. Okay, I'm listening. The bazaar is the people's market in Iranian cities. Shopkeepers and merchants were instrumental in the resistance movement against the Shah. The bazaar's... Oh. 
or Friday Bazaar was and continues to be a weekly event whereby merchants gather to sell goods. The bazaar is the lifeblood of Iran cities, especially the capital, Tehran. It is a social and intellectual hub buzzing with activity and teeming with richness of an ancient culture. Items for sale range from barrels of saffron or dried mulberries to hand-woven silk rugs that cost as much as a family's fortune. The bazaar's role was central in amplifying the message of the revolution. The entire nation felt the backlash of closed storefronts when thousands of bazaars went on strike against the Pahlavikan regime. No God but Allah, paid for by the Islamic Republican Party. The Islamic Republican Party, established after the revolution, was suspected of having ties to Hezbollah, an arguably reactionary religious party with militant tendencies. The Islamic Republican Party, established after the revolution, was suspected of having ties to Hezbollah, an arguably reactionary religious party with militant tendencies. It is speculated that members of Hezbollah were instrumental in bolstering Khomeini's uh, campaign when it came to protecting and defending their interpretation of the Word of God. Ayatollah Khomeini, a cleric and strong critic of the Shah, was a central figure that many hoped would become the new leader of Iran. As is typical in historical patterns of revolution when ousting one regime, the people must rally around the hopes of a new leader. Ayatollah became the central figure that many hoped would replace the Shah. Khomeini's popular criticism of the king emphasized him as a puppet of the West. Those who expressed anti-West ideals became the strongest supporters of Ayatollah. Oh, oops. Can I not exit out? There we go. Cinema Rex and Abadan has officially reached 400. Radio Iran reports that the bodies of 377. As I was saying, Reza, the cheese, the paneer, that's oh, what makes a sandwich a sandwich. And the cars we drive, the clothes we wear, the things we follow, that's what makes Iran Iran. Mint, basil, tarragon, the students, writers, the revolutionaries, giving us the extra kick we need to set change in motion. The Shah demanded that anyone who questioned his rule be imprisoned, tortured, or sentenced to death. As aside from the expected targets of regime crackdowns like communists and anti-royalists, the Shah demanded that anyone who questioned his rule be imprisoned, tortured, or, depending on the death of their offense, sentenced to death. This included artists and intellectuals that were highly respected by the Iranian people. By the end of 1975, 22 prominent poets, novelists, professors, theater directors, and filmmakers were in jail for criticizing the regime. Sounds like sometimes when, uh, what would be criticized was in plays, yeah, and that stuff. Ooh, graffiti portrait of a martyred member of the... Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Same thing. And I don't want to mispronounce names if I can avoid it. Here you go, sister. That says it all. You can't trust the Americans. Here you go, Many supporters of Ayatollah fostered a strong anti-American sentiment directed toward the U.S. government. Many supporters of Ayatollah fostered a strong anti-American sentiment. 
They held the U.S. government responsible for meddling in Iranian affairs dating back to the 1953 coup, when the U.S. positioned itself favorably to benefit from Iran's natural resources, namely oil. At the time of the revolution, Khomeini's supporters were intolerant of the United States' cultural influences and its endorsement of the Shah's reform policies. The title earned by the most renowned students of Islamic law in Iran directly translates to Sun, Sign of God. Ayatollah is the title earned by the most renowned students of Islamic law in Iran. The name translates directly to Sign of God. Ayatollahs have been have been the most dominant religious leaders in Iran for over 80 years, along with the newer established position of supreme leader, who has absolute political and religious power in Iran. In 1978, Shia Islam was the was the religion of 90% of Iran, Iran's 36 million people. The newspapers are lying. This is making this oh, okay, this is just... Here you go, sister. My father and my brother are rotting in jail. How many more must unjustly be imprisoned so that the Shah can live in his lavish palace and deny us our basic freedom? Here, brother, You're welcome, read brother. the truth of what is really happening. Anything else you read is corrupt and filled with lies. Not mercy, no thanks. You're lost. You look like you need to be enlightened. Is that what you call it? Who wants to read about the truth? In the 1970s, Iran's income inequality gap was the widest in the world. The economic recession had devastating effects on the working class as the rate of unemployment ballooned. An economic recession hit Iran's working class in the summer of 1978. Caused in part by the Shah's ambitious modernization and development programs, the rate of unemployment ballooned and the wages of many workers dropped by 30 percent. According to 1970s reports from the International Labor Office, Office, Iran's income inequality was the widest in the world. The people looked to the government to offer assurance and a solution, but the Shah's indifference exacerbated the situation. That's the Zoroastrian symbol, Furuhan. In school, they tell us it means royal power, but my mom always told me it stands for inner strength. One of the oldest religions of the world originated in ancient Iran over 3,500 years ago. Various principles within Judaism, Christianity, and Islam can be traced to teachings. Zoroastrian. The predating Islam, Zoroastrianism is the one of the oldest religions of the world whose divine teacher, Zoroaster, preached about its main principles over 3,500 years ago. Zoroastrianism is a sp highly spiritual faith rooted in elements of water, air, earth, and fire. The foundation of Zoroastrianism involves a devotion to the highest form of self, a person who abides by good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. Zoroaster taught that each person has the freedom to choose God, good or evil in the decisions they make. The prophet spoke of an eternal afterlife, and that the choices made by each person determined his or her destiny in such an afterlife. These teachings were later adapted into various principles of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Persopolis, the palace of Darius the Great, was constructed around 515 BCE. It served not only as the capital of the first Persian Empire, but also, but also as a place to celebrate Nowruz, the Persian New Year. Ignore the state-sponsored newspapers. Read the truth. You're welcome. It's Iran's national flatbread. It's coming to find a or bread bakery on every street corner. There are a variety of breads baked in Iran, among them, okay, Iran's national flatbread. Bread is a large part of an, an, an Iranian diet and is common to find a non bread bakery as often as one would find a corner store in a crowded city. A traditional Iranian brunch includes babari served with cheese made from sheep's milk, black seeds from fennel flour, 
and a cup of Persian tea and dates. And like I said, I don't want to mispronounce them, so I'm going to skip them when possible. Reza Shah, the Shah's father and predecessor, fanned the, a large piece of fabric that cloaks the body, an all hijab in 1936. He ordered the military to enforce the new law by arresting women who wore hijab and forcibly removing it. Under the Shah's reign, the grip on the veil was loosened. Many women chose not to wear hijab while others wore the of their own violation. March 97, 79 was then. Iran Shah, the Shah's father and predecessor, okay, he ordered the military to enforce the grip of their own. In March 1979, less than a month after his rise to power, Ayatollah Khomeini ma made hijab mandatory, specifically a veil covering the hair and a laundry tunic covered, covering fitted clothing, sparking widespread protests. Okay, well, I'm going to end the part here because I think we'll be going a bit farther in and there are going to be scenes which are a lot harder to pause. So, you shall hear from me in the next part.